Let's kick off our coverage today with the Patton Oswalt story. So I want to remind you, this is when the cult of the Democratic Party comes back to bite you, right? It happened. Remember, it happened to Sarah Silverperson. We told you about this just two weeks ago. This is Joanne Reed. She tweets out an article about the governor DeSantis, who was who was the enemy of the Democrats. So they want to make it out like he's a Nazi. And he he uh, announced that he was starting his own uh, National Guard force that's going to be answerable to him in Florida so he could better help deal with uh, uh, natural disasters. And because when that happens, the federal government directs them. And so he's starting his own thing. And guess what? 23 other states have the exact same thing, including California and New York, the biggest blue states in the country. So she tweets this out and says, this is fascisty bananas. And so Sarah Silverperson says, please read the article before you post this stuff. Your news outlet, the truth doesn't matter. Because Sarah Silverman read the article and she knew that was garbage. Right. That that's No, he's just doing something normal. Why are well, you pretending this guy's a fascist? Why are you misleading people? Which is what I do all day if you ended up watching establishment news. Kurt, you want to say something? It, well, what's funny is she assumed Joanne Reed didn't read the article when she didn't know Joanne also read the article. She's just a liar. Yes, yeah, she's just a liar. <laughs> like, she's just a, <laughs> yeah. So and this is what happened to Sarah. Sarah. So then they started calling Sarah a racist. And you would never say that stuff to a black person. The cult of the Democratic Party turned on you. You can't ever be seen defending the truth because they'll say you're defending DeSantis, which means you're defending a Nazi. So that's why. And then she had to do this. On side, we can't even critique anyone in your own party without punishment. One of the hosts of The View was like, what hubris for Sarah Silverman to accuse a black woman of not reading. Oi, Jesus H, what the, f I fucking, I surrender. Good grief, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> I cannot believe. So do you see what happens? I, I you got, you win. I just want a show business career. I, I don't want any trouble. You're right. You're right. I was wrong. She had to throw in an oi, like, a, hey, I'm Jewish. I'm not yes. a white lady attacking a black person. I'm also <laughs> depressed. Uh <laughs> so that, that's, what, that's what she had to do. Look at that. That's what she had to do to keep her place in show business. <laughs> that's what she felt like anyway, or else she's going to risk being canceled. Just like when I committed the crime of interviewing a libertarian on my show called Magnus and everybody lost their shit because I'm talking to a right winger. So they tried to cancel me, except I'm uncancelable. So uh, she wanted, got out in front of that. She doesn't want to get canceled. So she got out in front of it. Dave, Ch Dave Ch so Patton Oswald on New Year's Eve took a picture with Dave Chappelle. And so now he has to apologize for that. <laughs> 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 that's all he did did he take a picture with a war criminal like joe biden no did he take a picture with someone who imprisoned kids for truancy like kamala harris no did he take a picture with a news anchor that repeats propaganda no he took a picture with his buddy who's been a comedian for 34 years and by the way sells out theater Seventeen thousand people went to see dave chappelle and so he tweeted that out. Hey, look. Holy shit. They came at him. And what did he do? He had to apologize. He had to apologize for tweeting out a picture with his black friend. You saw somebody put a, I say that other one where they, they somebody pointed out that he had to have someone take a picture of him apologizing. Oh, <laughs> like, he had to, yeah. hey, get a picture of me looking sorry. Well, <laughs> he does look My sorry. Earbuds. Yeah. Now, again, just like I said about Sarah Silverman, uh, I was I was once very friendly with Sarah Silverman. I don't know if you would say we were friends. We were friendly for sure. And she was always very nice to me. And her heart always seemed to be in the right place, even when she was wagging her finger at Bernie supporters and telling us that we were ridiculous. I still understood why she was doing it. And I thought her heart even though she was wrong in that instance was, you know, she thought she was doing the right thing and she was a Bernie supporter. So 
Uh, I want to I have to say the same thing about Patton Oswald. No, I don't know too much about his politics lately. Uh, but Patton Oswald and I were friends. Again, f- uh, friendly friends. I don't know what uh, he re- he gave me a nice a blurb for my book. That was very nice of him to do. And I loved his book. I read his book and uh, couldn't put it down actually. And uh, so I've always been a fan of his comedy. I don't see all, I don't see all of his movies and TV shows. I don't watch TV shows and or movies much. But I know his comedy and I know him as a person. He's a great guy. And uh, so now he now he committed the sin of admitting to being friends with Dave Chappelle. And so he had to write this apology, and I want to read it to you. He said, saw a friend I hadn't seen in a long time this New Year's Eve. We've known each other since we're teens. He's a fellow comedian, the funniest I've ever met. The funniest comedian Patton Oswalt's ever met. That means he's the funniest comedian in the world, because I'm pretty sure Patton Oswalt's met everybody. He's a fellow comedian, the funniest guy I ever met. I wanted to post a pic and an Instagram story about it, so he did. The friend is Dave Chappelle, 34 years We've been friends. He's refocused and refined ideas a lot of us took as settled about race and history and life on this planet and spun them around with a phrase and a punchline. We've done bad and good gigs, open mics and TV tapings, but we also 100% disagree about transgender rights and representation. I support trans people's rights, anyone's rights, to live safely in the world as their fullest selves. Wait, 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 now, wait. what makes me sad about that is that i'm pretty sure dave chappelle 100 percent supports trans rights i don't think he's again i don't think he would say no we should discriminate against trans people have you ever heard him say that kurt no but if you don't go along with every little thing so right so this is what he says yeah this is what glenn greenwald the point he makes glenn greenwald the pulitzer prize winning journalist he makes the point that if i agree with your agenda 97 percent but I have a quibble with 3% of it, that doesn't make me an enemy. That makes me an ally that we have small disagreements with. But if you don't agree with them a thousand percent, you're now an enemy, which is a dumb way to do it because you're now turning (laughs) allies into enemies, which is what they tried to do with the patent. And uh, again, as far as I'm pretty sure Dave Chappelle would not be for discriminating against trans people. In fact, I've never heard him say it. I don't. I only saw his one special. Maybe he said in his other special, I didn't see it. Yeah, no, he said nothing like that. He didn't accept the basic premise, I guess, you know. I don't, I don't I think, think he, he says it. they shouldn't be married. I don't think he says they shouldn't be allowed to employment or should be discriminated against in housing or lending or anything. Right? But, but if you criticize any part of it, this is the argument you're creating. You're basically killing people by not accepting every little thing that an activist said. And, uh, you know, also for the record, remember Chappelle's trans friend that ended up committing suicide yeah, so after being bullied by the yeah. trans community online? Is, is that uh, so? He goes on for all the things he's helped me evolve on. I'll always disagree with where he stands now on transgender issues. I still I wish he would have put what it was that he disagreed with him on because I don't know what it is. I'm not being a, I'm not trying to play dumb. I actually yeah. am dumb. I don't fucking know what it exactly is he disagrees with. I don't think he knows either. I think he knows people were mad at him and he has to say. But this something. is what I mean, a backlash. You took a picture. It, it, you think he took a picture with David Duke or, or Ted Bundy? <laughs> well, I like how your friend of 34 years, you're supposed to disown them on the whims of Twitter. Yes. <laughs> like, or because you disagree with them about politics. Yeah. So here he goes. For all the things he's helped me evolve on, I'll always disagree with where he stands now on transgender issues. But I also don't believe a seeker like him is done evolving, learning. You know, someone that long see the struggles and changes. It's impossible to cut them off. You know someone that long, see the struggles and changes, it's impossible to cut them off. Yeah, like people in my family. You're not supposed to cut people out of your family because they voted for Trump. Or do you? Maybe you do that. I don't do that. That's what 
But Glenn Greenwald said if your friendship was based on politics, it was never a friendship in the first place. <laughs> so, you know, someone that long see the struggle. It's impossible not to be hopeful and open and cheer them on. Also, I've been carrying a lot of guilt about friends I've cut off who had views with which I couldn't agree or changed in ways I couldn't live with. Now, I don't before Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, right. all those people cheered me on. They all wanted to come on my show. They all said nice things about me. Patton Oswalt gave me one of the greatest blurbs for my book. book. Can you give me the book? I'll read it. Um, uh, and we, I would go to this comedy festivals and we would all have big laughs together. And I was doing the politics. I had the show on lefty KPFK, which is way left of NPR or used to be when I was on it. And here's the blurb he wrote. He said, Jimmy Dore, and this, of course, this is great for me. This is like me bragging, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Jimmy Dore is outrageous and outraged, bothersome and bothered. A crucial, profane, passionate voice for progressives and free thinkers in 21st century America. This book will anger you if you're a conservative and enrage you if you're a liberal. Enjoy. That's from Patton Oswalt. So. Wow, he's going to have to do another apology. He's going to have to do an work. apology now. <laughs> because I've become persona non grana in those same circles because I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton and I voted for Jill Stein. And then I wouldn't go along with Russiagate. And I told the truth that the mainstream media and the intelligence community is lying to you about it. Same thing with Syria. And uh, that was that. I was a big Bernie supporter. Then I was a Tulsi supporter. And that was stuff that you can't do. And so those and so when he says I've been carrying a lot of guilt about friends I've cut off um, who had views with which I couldn't agree. I wonder if I'm one of them. Now, again, I haven't been circulating in the in the comedy circles like I normally would for the last five, six years. Uh, so maybe I'm not. But I know I'm not on this Halloween card list anymore, which oh, hurts my bummer. feelings, which does hurt my feelings. So I don't know. Oh, I never got a Halloween card. Oh, see, that. I was more important. I knew mm -hmm. I was. I always knew I was more important. Thank you, Kurt, for <laughs> confirming that. <laughs> uh, but now when you and I are of, of similar importance. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, he says, sometimes I wonder, did I and other others cutting them off make them dig their heels in deeper, fuel their ignorance with nitro boost of resentment and spite? I'm an LGBTQ ally. I'm a loyal friend. There's friction in those traits that I need to reconcile myself. He means the friction between him being friends with Dave Chappelle and being an ally of the LGBTQ community. Uh, those, uh, there's friction in those traits that I need to reconcile myself. And not let cause feels of betrayal in anyone else. And I'm sorry, truly sorry, that I didn't consider the hurt this would cause or the depth of that hurt. He took a picture with Dave yeah. Chappelle. The, you know, and now he's got to apologize about the depth of the hurt he caused. Can that's, you imagine? That's, that's, that's nuts balls. <laughs> Yeah, that's and I'm that's, not saying Pad's nuts, but I'm saying it's nuts balls that we live in this culture that he has to do that. It's nuts balls that he has to do that, that he feels that he has to do that. It's crazy culture that we're living in right now. And they'll come after anybody for anything at any time. Don't don't you that's what a cult does. You understand that, right? That's what a cult does. You're not allowed to disagree with them one percent. Then you're outside the group. That's what a cult does, and that's what the Democratic Party is. They're a goddamn cult. And that's why Sarah Silverman had to do that, and that's why Patton Oswalt has to do this. Do you see that they, they all... They, oh, sorry. Go ahead. They, no, go they, ahead. All, they all believe, like, the best about their party no matter what. No so matter what. When he goes, the depth of the hurt I caused, 
you should meet and i by the way i like Patton a lot like me I, too I, hate, I i can't stand that he could even let this like himself get but it's partially social media addiction which makes you get a, a warped idea of yes what is hurtful and what's not and then the idea like wait a minute this is my friend 34 years you don't tell me who i could take a picture with no like, shit that's the first thing you should say this should that be hey if you don't like it go screw yourself should be the message honestly and and it people get warped I, I don't know it just warps people being on social media like that and then also there's the hollywood thing of where you don't really realize how bad your own side is which is what happened with sarah <laughs> that is right hey your own side are liars and they're tribal and if you go against someone who's in their tribe they'll come at you even if you're telling the truth that's what sarah learned and i don't know what I don't know what patent if there's a lesson for him to learn. Well, here's the lesson he says. He says, I've been messaging a lot on Instagram today and the back and forth has really helped guide me into the writing of this. I naively. I naively deleted a lot of posts in the comment thread, critical ones from LGBTQ writers and shit posts by turf anti trans orcs looking for clicks and giggles. <sighs> I wanted a nice comment thread about the pick with my friend. Ugh. So easy to think someone else needs growth and miss the need in yourself. Gonna keep trying. He's not wrong. He's not wrong at all. And so again, this is not critical of Patton Oswalt. This is to show how crazy the culture is that a comedian like Patton Oswalt, all he has to do is take a picture. That's that's how I felt when I interviewed that Boogaloo boy. All I did was interview him. They act like I joined the freaking Boogaloo. I just interviewed a guy. Yeah. Who has Jimmy, no influence I, of power. Who has no power, no influence. All I did was interview him, and everybody made me out like I was David Duke. No, I'm interviewing someone. That, yeah. You know how you... That's what you're supposed to do. Didn't a, didn't a reporter interview Osama bin Laden? Of back? course. Mike, Wall <laughs> like, Mike Wallace... How could you platform him? Mike Wallace <laughs> interviewed the Ayatollah Khomeini. They have, of course, everybody... People interview uh, 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 Manson. You know what I mean? People interviewed Phil Donahue. I grew up on him interviewing David Duke, Nazis. I grew up with Nazis in Chicago marching every year, and they were always being interviewed. Uh, somebody just texted me. I, they just did the math on this. Less than 4% of the people who liked this photo commented on the photo. Not all of them are negative, but that means he responded to this based on less than 4% of people complaining. Oh, That's really? Like all, oh. Yeah, and, uh, and the other thing is, the friction is the, is between the traits of being Chappelle's friend and still wanting to work in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there you go. And my, my only tip uh, would be to the uh, trans community is that maybe, maybe stop turning allies into enemies. Because it seems like that's what that's what's happening in this. Schedule. But again, I don't know many trans people, so I don't even know what the hell really uh, their thoughts are. All I know is the loudest ones online. Now, Kurt, you know some trans people. Yeah, I get. You know, I know three people that friends of mine that transition. Like a, a, I know before and after, and you mm -hmm. know, when I was in New York for years. Um, most people aren't. They don't like. They're not like this. This is a very specific. Did you see that memo that just came out where they. Uh, the trans legal something, which is a major activist group, they found that they're not doing well with the women's sports argument. Oh, I did I, it's see. Yeah, it's a thing like I I could have told you for free, but they probably paid thirty grand to to figure it out through like polling. That so this is some kind of like prepackaged like fake like activism that's not working, and it, and the people online doing it. That's a small majority of people, most of whom nothing to do with being trans are mentally ill people that's what twitter <laughs> twitter elevates that and instagram elevates that i agree so most of the people that you meet just want to live their lives and don't want to they're not trying to like uh send anybody off to a, a separate nation of untouchables based on small disagreements this is like almost all social media has has produced this this like illusion that it's a thing uh th this is the world we're living in now that you have to apologize for taking a picture with Dave Chappelle, who, by the way, has probably the most popular comedy special of the year on Netflix, which Barack Obama sits on the board of. So shouldn't Barack Obama have to apologize for green lighting or being on the same platform as Dave Chappelle? How come Barack Obama gets off on this one? How come he doesn't have to pay a price for this one? Isn't he a board member of uh, fucking Netflix? Or so, is it right? Doesn't he have power over yes. at Netflix? 
You and know. Dave Chappelle's the biggest comedy special at Netflix. What? How come he doesn't? But Pat Oswalt, who <laughs> doesn't have any power, yeah, uh, has to apologize for just taking a picture with him. Dave Chappelle, I mean, Pat Oswalt didn't give Dave Chappelle $60 million. That's what Netflix did. <laughs> uh, by the way, now I know, you know, I used to write for the Chappelle show back in the day, and I very much understand why Chappelle went to Africa which they always pass that nonsense reason of like somebody laughed too hard at a joke. That's not why. As soon as you put yourself in the jurisdiction of these people by taking the money, you're subjected to like, it's not, you know, slavery is too much to say, but it's like a, a you better do what we say because we gave you this money and you're famous. That means you're obligated to be under the thumb of the establishment f forever, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. And Chappelle stuck his thumb in their eye and, and they still have to pay. Like that's why... One thing you, everybody should praise Chappelle, he actually muscles corporations. One yes, guy. One guy. One guy. He had a contract with, uh, you know, he didn't want season three of Chappelle's show on. And fair and square, the contract was not Chappelle's favor. They had to do what he wanted to not look bad. Like, who else do you know who could pull that off? One guy against, like, Viacom or whoever. So it's another sad day. And too bad uh, for Pat Oswald, a big uh, fan of his, big supporter. He's a great guy, and uh, this is a weird world we're living in now. That's all I can say. Hey, come see a live Jimmy Dore show. We're in Los Angeles, January 7th and 14th. Then we're in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Philadelphia. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets and become a premium member to get access to all our premium videos.